Hello, YouTube universe. I am just going to wait a few minutes for everybody to show up. I am going to just wait a few more minutes. Let's start here at 7.05. I try not to be too punctual on YouTube because I realize a lot of my viewers don't show up right at the beginning. So I am glad you're here. Um, my artist inspiration lessons, um, I do them once a month uh, because there are so many fun um, artists that, you know, we, some of whom are famous, some are not, um, but they are just uh, so unique and so um, different that it's fun to try new techniques and, um, you know, not steal their artwork, but take inspiration um, from a set of really talented artists um, that have kind of shaped the world of art. Um, so today we are learning about uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Bas Basquiat? Um, I'm not French, so I'm going to have difficulty with his name, but um, he, he was uh, an American artist um, who became famous in the 1980s. So he was inspired a lot by graffiti, by um, kind of the new impressionism, um, bright colors, uh, and he had uh, some very specific um, shapes that he used over and over. So um, I will just show you quickly some of his work. Um, if you registered with me at the Painted Cicada, you may have uh, gotten an email with some of his pieces as well. Um, but one of his um, well-known trademarks is this crown. Uh, and he has a painting. You see, here's another one with one of his crowns. And then he has a dinosaur one. Oops, I didn't didn't even include that in my pronounce. Um, oh, here, here we go. Um, this one's a little harder to see, but he has this dinosaur shape that uh, is one of his most famous paintings. So um, a lot of his work. Uh, actually, most of his work includes bright, bright primary colors. Um, so that's what I'm going to work with tonight. Now, you can either uh, work with me step by step and kind of uh, repeat what I'm doing. Um, or uh, you can um, kind of just take inspiration from the colors and the shapes and totally do your own thing. So uh, that is your call. But tonight what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by creating just a background with uh, some bright primary colors, just an abstract background. So I'm going to pull out some yellow. And bright blue. Actually, I'll use this blue. Yellow, bright blue. Let me grab a red. And 
And I think I'm just going to go with uh, an abstract here. And I like to look at the work um, before I create, but I like to try to uh, just, you know, take inspiration uh, and not totally knock off the artwork. So. So I'm working in my art journal today. I'm just going to wet down the journal a little bit. Um, that kind of, this is just water. It just helps with the paint absorbing so quickly. So I'm just going to wet that, spread it around. Oops, got some hairs from my paintbrush in there. All right. Um, I think I want a majority of this uh, to be red. So again, I'm just taking inspiration here. I'm not uh, going to copy any of his pieces. Uh, that's why if you registered with me, you didn't get very specific instructions. That's intentional. Because tonight is all about taking inspiration and coming up with our own piece. And it's going to seem pretty quiet on my end. You'll probably hear some dog noise. Um, but it's difficult to play music on YouTube because it all has to be not copyrighted. And so I'm just going to work quietly today. If you're here watching, feel free to say hello. I know it's difficult to make art and chat at the same time. So I've just got a nice solid red background there. I'm going to let that dry for a moment. Um, one thing I like to do when I work in an art journal is just paste a place a piece of plastic underneath that keeps my other pages from getting super messy there I'm just going to use up all this red paint that I have. Since I poured it out on my palette, I'm just going to get it on there. The graffiti style is not one that I work with a lot. So this is new for me. Which I guess is kind of the point of doing the artist's inspiration at all is just to try new styles and see where I can go with it. This paint brushes out from earlier. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I think, oops, stuck my paper towel in my paint. I'm just going to add patches of color um, in the background just to kind of shake things up here. Yeah, might go fairly geometric. No, maybe not. I'll just do some weird uh, organic shapes.
this blue is fairly transparent. I'm probably going to have to add a second coat over that. My first coat of that blue dries, I'm going to add some primary yellow. I'm going to keep these fairly separated. Sometimes these little, almost like sprinkles, um, brush strokes, just totally remind me of the 80s. So I feel like that fits in pretty well. My dogs are in rare form today. They're not getting along. So if you hear growling in the background, that's what that's all about. A second coat of this blue. Since I'm working in my art journal, I'm not really expecting perfection. I'm just, just here to try something new. So. Blue is just a really inexpensive craft paint, so it's very thin. All right, so I am going to turn off my mic for just a second and I'm going to zap this with my heat gun. Stop. 
Okay, I hate using my heat gun with the microphone on. It is super obnoxious. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, so he's kind of got these, I would, I don't want to call them scribbles, just scrawling text and, um, let's see, let me get another example. So, um, I mean, they're almost like scribbles, but purposeful, uh, scribbly marks. And so I am going to get out, um, my crayons. I love, love, love these crayon to ash. Um, these are uh, Neocolor 1. They're not water soluble. So they're basically um, like high quality Crayola crayons. And um, I love them. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, come up with my own scribbles and um, interesting shapes for the background here. Again, kind of um, remembering that my inspiration here um, was big in the 80s, so I'm kind of um, going with these odd geometric um, shapes. And I can change up my colors as well. So I did this in black. And I'll add some, you know, as I continue working. up there. The hardest thing I think when I'm trying to do the artist's inspiration is not to overthink. Um, I have to keep telling myself I'm not trying to recreate something. I'm just taking inspiration. So um, again, I think uh, what I want to do is add kind of a, a subject in here. I think I'm going to go with pink. Um, I'm just going to sketch something. Um, he has a lot of uh, like faces um, that he does with uh, really uh, disproportionate, not disproportionate, but oddly shaped features. Um, he's got his, his dinosaur um, that I referenced earlier. Uh, there's a copy of this guy, uh, which is one of uh, his more famous pieces. Um, I'm not really sure what to draw. I think I think I'm just gonna go for a face. And then this brown face here. Um, definitely want the crown, right? Because that's one thing that reminds me of Basquiat. And then um, I'm just going to go with this square body. And so I sketch that in, and now I'm just going to grab some paint and fill in the color. And um, I'm not going to be real precise with it since this is supposed to be um, uh, 
kind of sketchy, scrawly fun. I'm just gonna kind of work my paintbrush quickly and sketchily around here. I want it to look sketched. I don't want it to look perfect because that's the type of artwork I'm working with today. What I can do now that I've got um, my main focus here is I can start thinking about fun details around the edges or the, um, whoa, whoa, my screen is glitching like crazy. Does anybody see that? I don't know if that's me or... YouTube. Wow, I don't know what's going on. 